It is a hot and humid Wednesday morning, typical of Ajumani during the wet season. Like everyone in this shed, Margaret Angua is a South Sudanese refugee, one of thousands now calling a Pagrinya refugee settlement home after they fled insecurity in their homeland. The 28-year-old mother of seven is attending a family planning clinic at Pagrinya Health Center 4, organized by Reproductive Health Uganda. Her firstborn is 12, while the lastborn is barely four months old. To Angua, life in a refugee camp is challenging. The family of nine shares one room and depends on monthly provisions from the United Nations agencies and their partners. Every down brings forth fresh struggles. Angua and her husband, Gibson, have decided to take her family planning services to control the family size. They have the children, which is at least some are somewhere in school, they're having, they're having problems of school fees now. Like now, if they have enrolled themselves in family planning, at least they can do budget for the future, which can help their children. Like everywhere in Uganda, culture dictates people's response to family planning messages among the refugee community. It is these barriers that Grali Gibson, Ngua's husband, has had to break in deciding to support his wife on family planning. I will advise my fellow friend, uh, when you have few family, that one can make you to budget for them. Not like you have 10, 12, that one which you cannot even handle. Uptake of the family planning services is still resisted among refugees. There are, however, some role models within the community. Rose Lily Maku is a mother of four. She confides she has been using family planning services to space her children. A nursery teacher, Maku plans to further higher education and fears more children will compromise this goal. It is good for us women to put this one, the family planning, so that we can plan for our future, even for our children. Uganda is host to over a million South Sudanese who fled fighting between factions within the Sudanese People's Liberation Army. A majority of these refugees are settled in camps across northern Uganda. The authorities believe controlling childbirth is necessary given the prevailing situation. These efforts are however challenged by a culture that still believes paying dowry entitles man to produce as many children as possible with his wife. If you went to the settlement, majority of people are women. So if a lady trying to make family planning before the husband came, and when the husband is arrived, this way you have seen that there's a contradiction in the family. So most, we're trying to also advise ladies, can you wait, because most of the men, they are not there. And if a time that the husband is around, come together, and we do sensitization even at the church. We also talk to church people, we have given chance to talk at the church. And the babies and your husband. But Reproductive Health Uganda is registering some success. Arusia Fielder from the organization's Ghoul Office told us the weekly clinics are getting more women who want to listen to the gospel of controlling childbirth. Now we are doing a lot of uh, sensitizations, first of all to educate them, to appreciate that they need to space. Actually, most times now we are, the name family planning is like a sad news to most of them. People want to hear child spacing is a calm name for them that they can tolerate, think that you want them to rest and they get back to production. When you say family plan, they, say, they have come to stop us from what? Having children. So what we are doing, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, educations and sensitization of the community to appreciate that they need to space. <laughs> In Germany, there are still challenges of inadequate access to contraceptives, stockouts, and low level of skills among health workers. Majority of the health workers were not trained. We, I think, ministry last trained health workers before 2005. So, majority of the health workers are young and new. And you also know in schools how the qualities are in the training schools. So they will not create demand for family planning and the, some will even scare the mothers if they want to use family planning. For now, 
The hope is that more men will open up to family planning services for this will ensure continued utilization of the available services. Joyce Bagala, Janina Nabukera, NBS Live at 9.